Okay, so we have set up our development environment and also in the last episode we created our to-do API and now we have this list of to-dos. In this episode we are going to create a component, a view component, that is going to take all of this data and display it on our page. So remember how we got all this set up. So I'm currently in my to-do folder and if I go to my code editor, uh, you can see that the to-do folder is actually containing October CMS or our to-do API. Now in that folder, we have this view to-do and this is our actual view application. Okay, so first of all, we are going to go to our console and install something called Axios. So first of all, I'm going to go to CD view to do. And now I'm going to install Axios. Now Axios is a library that is going to allow us to get all of that data from our API. Uh, if you watched the series with uh, when we were doing single page application with WordPress and Vue or Drupal and Vue, we used something called Vue resource. And uh, in this series, we are going to use Axios because Axios is kind of uh, become community standard for doing those uh, type of things. Of course, if you have uh, jQuery in your project, you can use jQuery for that. You can use vanilla JavaScript for that with Ajax and so on. So, but we are going to be using this Axios. So to, uh, to install Axios, you just do npm install save dev axios okay now once this is done now our axios is actually in this node modules folder it's installed there so what we need to do we need to call it but we're going to do that a little bit later for now i'm just going to close out these and open up our src folder and our app.view folder so this is the uh, entry point for our application as a, and now as you can see uh, it consists of this uh, hello component which is displaying that whole uh, hello uh, welcome to view application page and to see it we just go to our uh, console and run npm run dev once the server has started, we get this page. So this is the page that we are going to be working on. So uh, it's on localhost 8080. Okay, now, as you can see, in this component, we got up that view uh, and it's calling this hello component. It's also defining it right here. So components, hello. And also uh, you can see that this is distributed in three parts. So you have a template, so this is our template. Uh, then you have this script. So this is where we actually write our Vue.js code. And you have this style. Because since we are doing component based design right here, you can put all of your CSS in actual components that uh, that component relates to. So actually that CSS relates to. So you don't have to have uh, external CSS file to display all of that. Uh, so let's just try to make some changes to see how this works. So we have this hello.view and if you go right here, uh, you can see that we have all of these links right here. What would happen if I delete them? So if I delete them, save it, as you can see, they automatically disappear. Okay, so this is our hello component and you can see how the component looks like. It looks like pretty much the same as our app.view. So we have a template, we have a script and we have style. So we have the CSS for that. Okay, so now we are going to create our new component because we are going to create a component from, uh, actually we are going to make our list of our to-dos to be a specific component. So to do that, I'm just going to, in my components folder, create a new component and call it to-do list. So to-do list dot view. Okay, and now let's create those three parts. So we have a template, right? Then we have our script tag. So we have our script right here, and then we have our style. 
as you will see we will uh, in the later episodes create one more component that is going to go inside of this component so that component is going to be a to do component so every to do item will be a specific component in itself but in this first episode when we are doing uh, this with view we are going to create just this one component and we are going to create our listing right here so i'm going to save that and now if we go to app.view actually i'm going to create a div right here you have to create a div so you have to have some wrapper around your code and let's just do h1 and call it my new component okay so how do we call this into our app.view well the same way that uh, we did it with this hello component so i can actually just copy this out or delete it so i'm just going to delete this because i don't want to call a hello component right here and so our to-do list component is in components to-do list and it's going to be called to-do list okay so we imported that component into our app.view we don't need this hello anymore so we uh, we imported it right here uh, next thing we need to do we need to define our components so what components are going to be called inside app.view so of course it's going to be called to-do list okay so we have this component right here or oh, we don't need this style we can just save this as it is and now uh, we probably should get an error right here if we check out our console as you can see unknown custom element hello because i deleted this import of uh, hello so we don't have hello anymore uh, so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to delete this also but <clears throat> since this is a component based application what's happening right here is when you create a component then you can use a tag called like that component so in our case it would be to do list so you just call it like you would div tag p tag and so on so this is our to do list component and if we save this right now we should get my new component because we are importing that component from right here so in this component we can start writing our Vue.js code okay so first of all we just export our component okay and now we can give it the name so if you want a different name than this to-do list you can do that right here but i think it's a good practice to over always give a name to your component so we do name to-do list okay next thing we need to do we need to define the data for our component so we are going to have to do uh, items so data So our data is going to be called to do's and it's going to be an array of objects. So that object uh, can have something like uh, title. Uh, let's just put it to be just title for now. So, and let's create another one. One is go to the store and the other one is cook lunch okay so we have those set up now we have to display it somehow as you can see nothing is changed on this page so to display it in view it's very simple so we will just create a ul tag right here and then create an li tag and just do v4 equals to do in to do's so this is a for each loop in view form and in that for each loop we just put the title of our to do's so we just do something like to do title save this and if we go to the uh, page we get go to the store cook lunch now of course uh, we don't want to have our to do items uh, like this so we don't want them to be hard-coded into our application so I'm just going to delete these for now 
So I just wanted to show you how you uh, what is actually happening here. As you can see, we are getting the uh, an array of objects right here. And if you check our out our API, you can see the same thing. So we have an array of objects, and those objects have ID, title, description, status, created that, updated that, and that's it. Okay, so uh, how do we call this API and get this data into our application? So we are going to use Axios for that. And of course, to use it, you first have to import it to your application. And to do that, you just do import Axios from Axios. The view or web pack actually is uh, going to know that all of our libraries are contained in the node modules folder. So you can just write. And that's it. So import Axios from Axios. And now we have Axios imported into our application or into our component. Next thing we need to do, we need to create a mounted method. So mounted method is uh, going to uh, fire up once our component is um, started. So when everything loads, it's just going to go automatically to this method and do whatever we created in that method. So to do that, we just do mounted function. And now, now we just use the Axios API to uh, get our data. And to do that, you would just do Axios get. And then you define the URL from which you are going to suck that data into your application. And as you can see right here, this is our this is our API endpoint. So which is, we can just copy this out and paste it right here. So to do that dev API to do so of course it can be different for you. Then we want to get a response from that. And to do that, we just do function. And right here, we get uh, this to do's. So we want to set the to do's that we get from here, we want to set them in this variable, uh, you, you may call it a variable or data, or whatever. So we want to set it right here, so that the view has access to that, and that then we can display all of our uh, to do list, uh, actually to do items. So this to do's equals response. So response right here, that data. Okay. And I think that should be it. Let's just see if this works. Okay, so nothing happened. And we get uh, no access control allow origin in header is present and so on. So this is because uh, the October, so our API uh, has this security in place, which doesn't allow uh, for um, a request from other domains. So this is local host domain, and this is to do that dev domain, uh, it doesn't allow access from other domains to our actual API. So to get uh, around that, but just for our local development, of course, uh, in production, you should handle that a little bit differently. Uh, and probably your application would be on the same domain. So that wouldn't cause a problem. But uh, for now, we're just going to go into our access uh, HD access file, and just paste this in. So we are going to allow other uh, domains to be able to get to our data. So we get header edX control origin for all, uh, all requests uh, and methods, uh, everything is allowed right now. So if I save this, and now refresh our page. Now we don't get this, but uh, we cannot set property to do's of undefined. So this is actually happening because this is in another scope of our uh, function. So to get around that, we would just do this. So we define a variable called this, and it's going to be this. <laughs> I know it's a bit complicated when you uh, say this so many times, actually, we can call it self. So I think that's 
a little bit more standardized approach. So we define this variable self and it's going to be this. So it's going to be this whole uh, view component. And now if I go right here and say self dot to do's equals response dot data, we should get this working. So as you can see, we get test and all of our other to do's. Uh, if I refresh this, so we don't have any more uh, errors right here. So we get all of our to do's. And of course, uh, you can do something like uh, to do uh, title. And now we can do maybe BR right here and do to do description. Actually, let's put it on another line to do description. Save this. And now as you can see, we have test in the first one, let's just put this in, let's say h3 tag, just to be more obvious. And now we don't need this br. Save it. And now we got test and this is the description of our uh, to do. Uh, this is also the description, this is the title and so on. So as you can see, uh, getting this data from our API is actually very, very easy. Uh, especially using this Axios because it has a great API for very easily and simply doing uh, those get requests, put requests and so on. Okay, so that has been it for this episode. In the next episode, we are going to create another component which is going to be called just to do and it's going to uh, handle all of our to do's. So we are going to have a specific component for our to do item which we are then going to import into our to-do list component to display all of our to-dos. Uh, remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. Uh, also, if you want to ask me questions, you can do that on Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, uh, YouTube, and so on. Uh, if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, maybe, I don't know, subscribe to it. And if you want to send some money my way, you can use the Patreon page for that. So this has been it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.